Show is seriously the most unluckiest character in the series. I'm not saying a lot, because there's Fujita as well, okay? So, Show, he died. Not only that, but his devil tumor got crushed as well. Meaning that if Show's brought back to life, he can't be fully brought, to, brought back to life. His body can be healed, sure, but he'll just be a vegetable. Because, remember correctly, he comes with magic users, only for them to fully be revived is if their devil tumor is still intact as well. If that thing dies too, then they are just fucking dead. And that's what show is. Show is fucking dead. There's a, quite a few twists and turns in this volume. A few things to get pretty excited about too, honestly. Like the fact that we got zombified Shin. Yeah, Shin was turned into a zombie. And he is mercilessly cutting family members up of the end family. And around the end of the volume... Now, I don't know what you would call that, essentially. But the part of the hammer he used to actually dig nails out... Yeah, he takes that part and embeds it right into Noi's head. Right into her fucking temple, invented. But, before Shin became a zombie, Shin, level-headed Shin, placed these two really tiny little snake-looking charm things inside her head. Because these little snake-little charm things, as long as the devil tumor latches onto it and embraces it, will act as a healing mechanism. Meaning that, if somebody were, perchance, to do lethal damage to Noi, then that would activate, essentially, healing her. Speaking of healing, Dokuga got healed. But now he is working as a servant to Ibisu, because Dokuga lost his memories. Yeah, Ibisu's still alive, and so is Kikorage. And it's all thanks to N's dead body. <laughs> Even in death, N still is more useful than Fujita alive. Oh my god, poor Fujita. It seems like this motherfucker can't catch a break. But anyways, I'm, I'm going ahead of myself there. Going back to Dokuga and Ibisu, Ibisu... Basically tricks a amnesic do Dokuga, okay, into thinking that his name is actually Keiko, and that she is his master. So Ibisu basically has one of the strongest members of the Cross Eyes on a leash right now, having this motherfucker do anything. And we all know Dokuga can fight, okay. Dude is good at hand-to-hand -hand combat, so Ibisu, she has a maid. Honestly, she's probably one of the luckiest characters in this series. Once I am done with this story, with reviewing all these volumes, I am going to start doing character analysis videos for individual characters from the series. So on to Fujita and his lucky breaks. So first, he basically tells Tetsujo everything. Tells him that he's been following them. He knows what happened between Dokuga and the boss. He knows everything that's been going on. And at first, it seems like he has it made. That there are going to be an alliance between them. He promises that he's going to you know, help bring back his two fallen comrades. And, and Tetsujo is buying it. He is buying it hook, line, and sinker. But Tetsujo is not as stupid as Fujita thinks he is. You see, Tetsujo is a very perceptive kind of person. He notices the smallest details. He notices that Fujita was just walking kind of stiff, as if trying not to crush something. And lo and behold, he finds out that Fujita is carrying around N's Devil Tumor. And right when Fujita thinks he has a lucky break because Shin shows up. By the way, that's zombie Shin, not level-headed Shin, okay? Yeah, Shin shows up 
and cuts Fujita to pieces with his magic. Not only does he cut Fujita to pieces, he cuts Choto to pieces, he cuts Turkey to pieces. He's just cutting everybody to pieces. Shin, as a zombie, is diabolically fucking nuts. Fuck, I am fucking loving how crazy Shin has become. And granted, it's not Shin. It's Shin being controlled. Now, why is there a zombie Shin, you might be asking? Okay, it's because there are these tubes that while the entire department store went down the lake of refuge, while it sank into there, after the boss gave his sacrifice, all these tubes came out of the ceiling and basically latched on to every single human that was still in the department store, leaving the magic users alone for the time being, that is. Because you see, within the department store, there's different sections, different levels. In one area, you got Fujita and Tetsuzo. Another area, you got Dokuga, now going by Keiko and Ibisu with N's dead body and Kikorake. Then, in another section, you got Chota with Turkey, a dead show. Shin and Noi, another area, you got Nikaido, Kawaziri, and Risu. AKA curse. So Risu becomes curse straight away because he feels killing intent. Now killing intent are the people that got pulled up by these Matrix tentacles, okay? Because they're exact same looking kind of tentacles that you saw on the Matrix when Neo woke up from the Matrix and you know he pulled it out of his skull. It kind of like that, except they don't have to be implanted in, into your skull, they get be implanted into your leg, into your back, basically anywhere. And I'm guessing was actually the boss's doing of the cross eyes. Turning everybody into zombies, and Shin gets forcefully turned into a zombie himself. And while all this is going on, mind you, Kasukabe figures out and connects the pieces of Kaimon. Of who Kaimon once was, basically. He figures it out all inside of his head. Or rather, I think it was all inside of his head where he made all the connections. And this only thanks to Dr. Fox with showing what he had seen through a camera. Now, if you remember, very, very early on in the story, Shin and Noi were deployed to take care of Kaimon. Shin confronts Kaimon, they both fight, but Shin gets the upper, upper hand and essentially decapitates Kaimon with his hammer. The doctor, at the time, placed a camera that would take a photo every couple seconds, basically, automatically. And it wasn't until now that we actually got to see what was shown in the photos. And what was crazy is the fact that one of the photos, or not even the photo, it was actually with a uh, Kaimon's x-ray photograph now we see a bunch of little skulls, kind of like around the base of the neck. Thus, letting us know that there are multiple heads within Kaiman's body. And when Kaiman grew back his head again, after it being cut off by Shin, there were multiple heads of Kaimon trying to come out all at once. And thus, Kasukabe... Bixer remembers a lot of his conversations he had with A, with the conversations of A wanting to become a magic user, the fact that they use multiple different types of, of bodies from different magic users to make him a magic user, and the fact that A felt like he became part of whole. He became part of the city that after being in that sludge in the lake of refuge he had become one with everything maybe that's why the story is called doro he doro i believe the direct translation is mud in mud maybe having a muddy memory birthed from mud itself 
is the reason why the story is entitled as it is. Kawajiri gets fucked up bad. Dude tries to use his Nightcrawler ability and ends up, getting, ends up getting fucked up. His eyes bleeding. Then, <laughs> and that's not bad enough, he tries to use smoke to create a door and his hand, like fingers from here to here, just chopped. And thus, the roles of someone that feels like they're feels useless, someone being useful, gets reversed for Kawajiri and Risu. Risu ends up becoming the one who is more capable of fighting now than Kawajiri can ever hope to become. And quite quite frankly, I, I don't see Kawajiri making, making it alive out of the story. I really don't. Not unless Nikaido uses her ability which she still has four more shots to use four more different chances to change the course of the story whether or not she'll do this it's up to her you know who's to say if she will or if she won't do this because changing the past has its repercussions and last but not least kaimon is back normally if i were much younger reading this for the first time I probably would have been happy, jumping for joy, but now, being as being the age that I am, which I will not disclose, <laughs> I'm very skeptical about his appearance. Because why now? Why is Kaiman showing up now? And is he the deep that Haru was t was telling to Kasakabe? while Kasakabe was inside of her devil body. Is he the reason why all the devils had gathered under Chidoruma's orders? Why they're all going down into the department store? Is Kaiman the thing that Chidoruma wants to see most? And is this Kaimon what had come out of what looked to be the shell of the amalgamation that was once the boss. Who is this Kaimon? I get the feeling that the answer to that may not be asked, may not be answered in the next volume. Possibly next couple of volumes. But, weirdly enough, the end of this volume, it said next final volume. So maybe the author thought they were going to wrap everything up in the next volume, but decided Ah, hey, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to make three more volumes after that. No, oh, sorry. It'll be four more volumes after that, because next will be volume 19. I can't count. <laughs> okay, so, what do you guys think of volume 18 of Doro Hedoro by Q Hayashida? Let me know in the volume... Let me know in the comments down below. I don't say volumes down below. That, that would make any sense, would it? No, would it? <laughs> give this, if you'd be so kind, give this video a thumbs up, as well as subscribe to the channel. That way you will know when I put out a new video. Oh yeah, or be notified of that though, you first will have to hit that notification icon and make sure the bell is a ring a ding ding. -in. And with that being said, hope you all have a blessed day. Bye.